What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I've got a massive unboxing here. Three boxes, one of the biggest unboxings I have ever done. Uh, there's one of the biggest books I've ever bought that's in here. Really excited for this. It's also one spec book, just for fun, because I gotta, you know, gotta throw one of those in there. But let's get into these to see what we got. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. Uh, please remember to check one of my prior videos. A couple videos ago, I've got a free giveaway going away. Just got to make sure you watch that video. There's some instructions in there uh, for the free giveaway. Now, like I said, I have got three boxes here. One of the books is, it's the biggest raw book I've ever bought. I know some people that watch the channel were uh, in the claim sale when I picked that book up. So that one is in here as well as a couple others from the same seller, then, I mean, just, there's some awesome books here. I'm really excited for this. And uh, one, I'll call it like a, you almost, almost say it's like a late spec book, but also an early spec book. So I'll actually open that one first. I'm gonna save the, the really big book for the end. So if that's the one you wanna see, you can just skip to the end, I guess, but I think it'd be fun to, to stick with me on these. Uh, so <laughs> there's some cool books in here. Uh, some one that I mean one you'd like to never see and then just some others are some big Silver Age books in here <laughs> and uh, but this one uh, this is the spec book I, I picked this one up from post-war comics uh, they are on Instagram and if you don't follow them they have been just like buying every collection it seems <laughs> out there right now and uh, and they're They've, they've picked up, you know, just a lot of collections. They did a, a big sale on, um, on Elite Comics 11, and this was one of the books that they had, and I decided to pick it up. Now, he did say he, he hadn't pressed these books, thought it could maybe go higher. Now, I, I never buy a book based on a hope that it's going to grade higher than what it, what it got. Um, I'm always going to buy it based on what its existing grade is, and then I'll evaluate the book when I get it to see if there's any potential for some type of grade bump. Uh, this one is a spec book, but I'd say it's like a little late to the game, but then it's also getting to the point where it's maybe a good time to pick it up again because there is another season coming. And this book is Peacemaker number one. So Peacemaker was such a huge hit. If you didn't watch that show, I highly recommend it. It was a great show. This is not the first appearance of Peacemaker. Uh, that is in a completely different book. Um, but this is the first solo title. And, um, you know, this one graded at an 8.0. He thought he said it might be able to get a, a 9.0. I'll definitely have to check it out and check the grader's notes and everything. Uh, this is kind of a, a tricky book with grading because it has some kind of some weird stuff in the graphics on the cover. Um, but it's just, it's a tough book to get, especially in the higher grades. These Charltons tend to be a little difficult to get in the, in the higher grades. And so NATO is a nice book for this. And I just thought this is a good one. And the reason I was saying it was late is that Peacemaker already came out. These, a lot of these books spiked for that show, but they're starting to come down again. And they've announced that there's going to be a second season. And so at some point between that season and the next season is usually a good time to pick up books like this. And so it may not be right now. Maybe it's something to watch for and, you know, look for this type of book and maybe you can pick one up or some other Peacemaker key and, uh, you know, just in preparation for that show. So yeah, decided to get this one. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a close look at it later. See if I think it has any chance at a, at a grade bump because this book, moves up in price very, very rapidly as you as you even move up half grade, full grade uh, from, you know, when you get to these higher grades. They just they just are so uncommon in that high grade. So definitely something that's worth checking out. But that was the first book. That's the, uh, that's the, the spec book. Um, now, next one I'm going to do uh, has a couple Golden Age books in it. Then this last one here has a, this one here has a couple, sil or three Silver Age books in it two really big ones um this one for the golden age books this has i mean this this might be one of the more rare books i've ever had um this this is a cool book to have the opportunity to, to pick up because you just some books you just you see them come up for sale and you're just like 
I feel like I have to take my chance now because it's the type of book that you may not see come up for sale again for years. And if it does, it may be, maybe it's a high grade one and it's completely outside your budget or maybe by then even the low grade ones are completely outside your budget. And this one, even this, this lower grade, this is kind of like a low to mid. It's pretty close to outside my, <laughs> my budget. This is not a cheap book. Um, but then there's another one in here uh, that's a, a pre-code horror book. And I just, I always like picking up pre-code horror. I think it's just, it's a great trend right now and I think they're cool books. So I like to buy them. And uh, I want to be real careful with these because, like I said, not a cheap book. All right. So let's go with the pre-code horror first. Uh, this one is a great skull cover. This run has a lot of really cool covers in it. I actually showed a copy of a, a different cover in a previous unboxing of issue number 20. This is Mysterious Adventures number 10. And uh, they just, they have a lot of these like skull covers where it's just some, it's skeletons doing all kinds of things on these different covers. And this is issue number 10. They, it's actually a, a relatively long run of just like mostly skull covers. And you can see like the colors on this one. I mean, you can tell from back there, colors really, really pop. I honestly don't remember what the grade was. I mean, just like from the front cover grading, I would say probably like a four, maybe something like that. I mean, it's got a, you know, it's got a, a crease, a little bit of crease right there. And then along the spine, there's definitely some wear. There's that little bit of chip on the top. You've got that reader crease. Um, Cause you see the staples on this one, they got put off center on the front. And that's like the opposite of what I had said before, where you often see really high grades when the staples are put off center on the back, because when the person flips the book open, then they're not creating a crease. But in this case, they're creating that crease right at the staple when they're when they're reading the book. And so, um, you know, you've got that little bit of a reader crease, you've got some little tears at the top and bottom, but man, colors, just incredible for this book. Uh, so Mysterious Adventures number 10, just a really cool book, pre-code horror book. This is the really big Golden Age book that was in here. Um, man, awesome cover. Uh, this is Startling Comics, number 20. This is a character called Pyro Man. Uh, I have had a copy of uh, another book of him. He was, uh, I, think, I think it was like issue 29 or, or, or issue 32 or something like that where he's punching some Nazis in the face on a, on a, uh, like a submarine. But this one this is a big book. Um, you've got you know the hooded Nazi villains on the front. You've got the woman that's, it's like snake bondage you know, on the front, just a crazy, you know, a crazy cover. And, um, and the, like I said, this is a big book. It is a nice presenting copy. Um, the main, you know, there's, there's all kinds of little flaws on this one. You know, it's got this dust shadow, sun shadow, whatever you want to call it on the side here. And then at the staple, there are definitely some tears at the staple, but I, I, I got multiple pictures at the staple. It's definitely attached um, at that staple. Uh, this is one that I will send to get pressed and then graded, but it's something where you know, I, I'm sure the presser's gonna have to be very careful with it because the last thing you wanna do is, is detach something on the book. But this, this book, there are 10 universal copies, 12 total copies. I'm hoping this one will become the 11th universal copy and uh, just awesome cover. Like really just amazing World War II content. And um, yeah, really happy with this one. That's oh, it's just such a cool cover and just such a rare book. It's just, like I said, one of those that when you see a book like that come up for sale, if you can get it, you, you go for it because you just, you never know if you're even going to see one again. So super awesome book. Really excited about this one. All right. So we got the golden age stuff out of the way, the spec book out of the way. Now we've got this box. This is the big one. So this book or these books, I picked up, and I want to be I want to be as careful as possible with this. I don't want to nick anything. Um, this is from Superworld. I've talked about them a number of times. Uh, they have their like a weekly claim sale. It's on Tuesday nights uh, from like six to seven thirty, something like that. And I I um, I watch it almost every week. I mean, every once in a while I'll miss it. Um, but I had 
sold a lot of books over the last month or so, and so I had I was I had some money saved up where I, I could either you know I could potentially get a, a bigger book, and this one came up for sale, and I decided to go for it. Uh, I made an offer, even though. So if you haven't watched the Super World claim sales before, they don't do offers. Uh, you can do them at the end. But in the middle of the sale, they don't do offers. It's all, you know, it's the price. You claim the book at that price, and that's it. But with how expensive this book was, I thought maybe I could get away with an offer. <laughs> and so I, I went for it. I, uh, you know, I, I sent the offer, and they, they did consider it and accepted. And so now I got this one. And so I'm very happy about that. I'm glad they worked with me. Now, I will say, um, this one does have, uh, it's, it's trimming, it is trimmed, um, but, you know, I was, like, I was, I was madly, like, looking up pricing and stuff, trying to see, like, I'm like, because that's always harder to find, you know, the, the grading for things that are trimmed, you know, it's, there's less sales. Felt like the price was, was good for a trimmed copy of this book, so I went for it. Um, I, I generally steer clear of restored Silver Age books, but I have said I will make exceptions for the like mega Silver Age piece, and that is what this one is. Um, there's also two other books in here, uh, one from the same run, and one that I just thought was, I don't know, a cool book to pick up. So, packed really well, plenty of bubble wrap, it was shipped like FedEx overnight, <laughs> you know, so got here, got here really quick. So everything was, was good with the, with the uh, shipping. And I'm just gonna cut away for a second while I remove this tape, just make sure I do it all safely. All right, so I got everything out of the packaging and I'm gonna make you wait till the end. So <laughs> here's the first book. This is Ghost Rider number one. And this is the 1967 version of Ghost Rider, not the 1973 uh, version of Ghost Rider number one. Um, but this is just a nice high grade copy of this. It's tough to get these in higher grades, especially because of that black cover. So I decided to pick this one up. So Ghost Rider number one, cool cover, decided to get that one. Now, second book. This was one that uh, just came up in the claim sale the week afterwards, um, and they ended up shipping them together because I'd asked them to hold off on shipping the, the other book. And this is Fantastic Four number 52. So first appearance of Black Panther. Uh, it looked like a, a pretty nice copy. I think he had it like a four five or a five. Um, there's a little bit of like staining, you know, up there. But in general, it's a pretty presentable copy. There's definitely some color rub along the spine. But not really a lot in terms of, of spine wear. A little bit of, you know, wear on the bottom and everything, but pretty presentable copy. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with this one. I've been steering clear of Fantastic Four 52 for a while. I just keep expecting it to, to drop more and it just doesn't. So I decided, hey, you know, what the heck, I'll, I'll pick up a copy. It's a, it's a big key regardless, even though we don't have Chadwick Boseman anymore. Um, and so I, I still decided to, to grab this book. It's, I still think it's a little risky because of that uh, in terms of like an investment type book but it's, it's such a great cover. I, I, I have a really low grade copy that's at CGC right now. It's like a 1.0 or something like that, or maybe a 1.5, um, but this one's a little bit nicer. Definitely nicer presenting a copy of that book. So, Index 452, First Black Panther. And now the, the big book. And uh, so, same run as uh, Fantastic 452, but uh, 51 issues earlier. So this is Fantastic Four number one, and like I said, this copy is trimmed. Uh, I believe it's trimmed on the right edge, or this edge here, and the top. It actually almost even looks like it might be trimmed on the bottom too. I don't know, but regardless, it's a trimmed copy. Um, you can, one of the ways you can really tell a book is trimmed is when you look at the, like the, uh, the pages, you should, especially in these older books where they, they, printed, they printed all of them and then folded them together like this. And when you do that, if you have paper that's all the same size and you fold it together, you get a little peak at the top in the middle. And when a book gets trimmed, 
that peak goes away <laughs> because they now have just smoothed it all out. And now it's not always the case. And with modern books, they're all cut, you know, pretty similar, all that kind of thing. But with Silver Age books, older books, that's generally a pretty quick way to identify a, a right edge trim. On the top edge, there is almost always an overhang. And so when you don't see any overhang, and like on this one, you can see there's, there's no overhang there. Um, you can tell it's trimmed. Now, it's also the fact that like it just, the trimming isn't real clean. Like sometimes you'll get them where it looks real smooth, but this one you can see it's like, it's a little wavy. Uh, they were probably, it looks like there's maybe tape up there. Maybe they were trying to remove tape, um, you know, that kind of thing. And now the bottom edge usually is flush with the pages. And so that one I think can often be one of the harder types of trimming to identify is that bottom edge. But the, the easy ways or the, the more obvious ways for trimming is the, the top edge, if there's no overhang, and you know, if you have some kind of like a little bit of waviness, that's probably a sign of trimming. And on this edge, on, on this edge over here, if there's a, non, no peak in the, the paper there, then you likely had some trimming going on. Um, but still, Fantastic Four, number one, the, the book that really saved Marvel, got them into superheroes and just everything came from that. Um, this book has been just absolutely exploding over the last six months to a year. And so, yeah, maybe a little risky picking up. Is it near a peak? All that kind of thing. But it's such a, it's such a major key. It's just something that I'm not overly concerned about regardless. And this, I've, I've said this before, it's like kind of gets your, you have a hand in the game now. You know, you have you have a book that you can then, if you if you want to upgrade it later and then sell that copy, you have options there to, to do that. And um, yeah, here's the and this is in one of those clear backing boards, so that's why you can see the back cover without any issue. And so here's the back cover, and I will definitely do a page count. My my hands are sweating just like holding it <laughs> like this. So um, I'm I'm I don't really like uh, handling comics with the neoprene type gloves. Um, I just don't feel like, I know people say you don't have the dexterity and I, I agree with that. So I'm always nervous doing that. Now this one, it's a lower grade copy, you know, you get two, five, something like that. I think they grade it as a three, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it gets a three, but I don't know. There's just a lot of spine wear. Um, but a, a book that I'll definitely want to have pressed and clean to at least make it look as good as possible with that purple label that it will inevitably get. Um, just, yeah awesome book. First appearance of Fantastic Four. First appearance of the Mole Man. You know, I mean, just such a major villain. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, real excited about this one. Happy to have it here. So uh, this will be one that I'll, I'll be sending out pretty soon. I'll have to think about when I can do my next, uh, my next submission, because this would definitely be a walkthrough. It doesn't matter that it's trimmed. This is an expensive book. It will be a walkthrough. It's probably going to I mean, it's one of those that you have to pay 3% of value to get the book graded. So that's the other thing you always got to think about with books like this is the, the pressing can be really expensive. The grading can be really expensive. Uh, so you have additional costs that really come into play um, with books like this. But, uh, but yeah, super happy with that. Very excited. So some really cool books, you know, nice little Fantastic Four pair there, Fantastic Four 1 and 52. And then the other, just the monster book in here is uh, this Startling Comics number 20. Uh, I mean, this, this is by far the second most valuable book in here, um, much more than that Fantastic 452 or, or anything else. Uh, this is a big book. And so rare book, excited for that. Again, really excited for this one. Hope you enjoyed this video. Saw some, some pretty cool books. Maybe learned a little about trimming because that's something I know a lot of people are concerned about. It's one of the hardest things to identify. And I mean, it's one of those types of restoration that I wouldn't, you shouldn't be ashamed if you miss, <laughs> if you miss that one. Uh, I think there's a lot of times where people will get, they'll send into CGC or CBCS and it'll say trimming one time, the next time it won't. It's definitely a, a tough call with trimming. Um, so hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.